Hello everybody, this is Dragonzilla1991 here, and for today's slash tonight's review, we're going to be taking a trip down memory lane, because I'll be looking at a set from long ago, which is the Bad Eye Creations Godzilla Pack of Destruction set, that was a short-lived pack, which was originally released all the way back in 2002. And why was it unsuccessful? Well, as the Doctor would say, I'll explain later. However, before we look at the figures, let's first talk about the packaging. The miniatures are displayed like this in the packaging, which has this beautiful artwork that showcases Godzilla blasting his atomic breath. Even though it does look more like fire, but really, it's the King's iconic atomic blast. One side gives a description on who Godzilla is, as it shows 84 Goji, a depiction of Godzilla who isn't in this set, and the other side promotes the Godzilla Crumble Sword set, for good reason. The top has the title of the pack, and the bottom has the trademark logos for the kaiju who are included in the set. It even has the trademarks for Baragon and Kigodora, to which I first I thought was an error, because neither characters are included in the pack, to which they should have, but I digress. Anyway, someone on Facebook said that it's no error, as the Pack of Destruction is an add-on to the Crumble Zone, which actually does make sense, or doesn't. Again, I'll talk all about that later at the end of the video. And finally, the back of the box promotes Wave 1, which includes 73 Shoa Gigan, who were reviewed all the way back in early 2017. Links in the description if you wish to check that old video out. Uh, warning, it's very droney. Rainbow Mothra and two incarnations of Godzilla, which are the original 54 Short Eye Gorgi and 95 Burning Godzilla, respectively. So now we've talked about the packaging, let's now take a look at the monsters themselves, as that's what you've all come to see. Now, if you saw my review on the Safari Limited Cryptozoology Tube that I did last year, you may recall that I said that when I do figure sets, I'm going to be start off with figures that are least and end with the best. And even though I'm sticking to that statement, I'm actually going to start off the review with the two Mothras. Or just Mothras, since both Larvae and Amargo are the same character. Not because they are Millie's favourites. In case any of you are thinking about unsubscribing, killing me, or sending me death threats, these are great models, don't get me wrong. I just feel that if I talk about Mothra first, then she's out of the way. First off, Mothra in her Larvae form. It's just a simple little figure. I mean, when we first see Mothra, she's just a little brown worm like Caterpillar, but can still pack quite a punch, especially when fighting against great foes like Godzilla and King Ghidorah. The eyes have been painted blue to indicate that she is calm, because when they turn red, that's to show anger and aggression, and the jaws are black like they were in the films. This miniature has captured the props like this in great detail. Also, here she is with her Japanese counterpart. Now we move on to Mothra in her Imago form, and for this particular incarnation of the character, this is the Heisei Mothra from 1992's Godzilla vs Mothra The Bar for Earth. How do we know this? Well that's because her feet are more eagle-like, and they were also yellow in the movie, unlike on the figure where they're white. In fact, Mothra had bits of orange scattered throughout her body, where the US model is mostly white. I mean, she still looks nice, don't get me wrong, but I honestly think that the Japanese Gashapon figure, to which I don't currently own, has nailed it. Many of the figures in the set are still nice, but inferior compared to their Japanese counterparts, to which I'll show at the end of the video. But Mothra in her Imago form is certainly one of the best figures in the set. So both Mothras, Slavia and Imago, are nice looking figures, and are full on perfect. The same, however, cannot be said for the next two models, because we now move into Uncharted territory, as we're now going to be taking a look at two figures that I'm not a fan of, not only from out the set, but in the whole franchise itself. Here is the Heisei version of Mogira from 1994's Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla, and I've just got to ask, why? Out of all the mechs in the entire series, why on earth did it have to be Mogira? Why not have, oh, I don't know, Mecha Godzilla or even Mecha King Ghidorah, even though the character was more of a zombie cyborg rather than a mech? You know what I mean. I suppose that the idea that the Heisei Mogira is designed to be a defender of mankind, as it was created as a military weapon, well, so was the Heisei incarnation of Mecha Godzilla, who Mogira was built from the remains of. It's one of two figures that poses articulation. However, I'm not a fan of the model. I prefer the original Japanese version, which is better. 
Okay, I may have started harsh on the figure, but that doesn't mean I hate the character of Mogira in general. I do like it. Maybe not on the same level as, say, Mechagodzilla, and I actually do prefer the original show incarnation from 1957's The Mysterians. But yeah, this isn't a character who I would have picked for the set. So all Mogira fans, sorry. Next up is the son of Godzilla, Manila. And again, like a Mogira, I just gotta ask, why? Just why? Who insisted to put the worst character in the whole franchise in this awesome set? Bad Eye Creations had all these other better looking kaiju that they could have included, such as King Ghidorah, Rodan, Aegirus, Space Godzilla, Gorosaurus, Varn, Baragon, Komonga, Titanosaurus, etc. and so on, and they go for the most whippiest slash hated character in the whole series. As the angry video game nerd would say, What are they thinking? Hell, even Makima would have been a great addition to the Pack of Destruction set. I suppose maybe the idea is that Manila is there for those who wish to tell a story about Godzilla taking his kid to a city for his first rampage. But if they wanted a juvenile Godzilla in the set, then they could have gone for Godzilla Jr. and you would have had the entire cast from Godzilla vs. Destoria. Missed opportunity there. The sculpt's bad, the paint job is decent despite being inaccurate, and the face, don't give me star on the face. He looks like a drugged up Ninja Turtle. Yeah, this is clearly the worst figure out of the whole set. I said it before and I'll say it again. Why? Just why? What were they thinking? <coughs> this review started off well, and then it felt like a chore. But have no fear, because we are now going to talk about what I think, and in my opinion at least, are the best figures in the whole Godzilla Pack of Destruction set, and they are a group that I call the Showa Trio. The first figure of the Showa Trio is the original 1954 Gojira himself, and this is a scaled down version of BC's earliest model of 54 Godzilla. He is definitely one of the top figures in the set, not as good as the Japanese Gachapon figure of him, but he still has his charm. However, unlike the Japanese model, which is in black and white, US Godzilla is in colour, as you can see his tongue is painted red. Like Mogira, he too possesses articulation in his arms, but when they're placed up, he looks like he's getting ready to box another monster. Maybe it's Manila for being in the set. I meant to take a picture to demonstrate what I'm describing, but I forgot. Because this is an American set, I like to believe that 54 Godzilla in, the, in this pack is from the US version of his dub film with Raymond Burr, Godzilla King of the Monsters, and the high grade model is based on the Japanese version, even though both figures work either way. Shodai Goji is one of the most destructive incarnations of the King, so it makes sense for him to be in the set. Well, any other incarnation of Godzilla would be at home as well, even though they too are also destructive. However, Gojira is ideal. Let's now talk about Manda. Now I know that some folks have said they would have preferred it if King Ghidorah was in the Pack of Destruction set, and while I would have to agree on that one, yes King Ghidorah can easily replace Manila, but honestly I think that Manda is a welcome addition to this set, even though it would make more sense if it was the Destroyer Monsters incarnation of the character, because we rarely get figures of 68 Manda, and there are a lot of Atragon Manda models out there on the market. Well, miniature-wise, at least. He is depicted as being green, where in the movie Adragon, he appeared to be a bluish sort of colour, with a tint of green. It's really hard to tell, because most of Manda's scenes are underwater. However, there is a point where we can see a close-up of Manda's face, and he looks to be green, mixed with gold. It's why he is painted in green, and because he's a dragon, he looks good in it. I like the pose that he's in. It's a very aggressive, defensive sort of pose, it looks as if he is protecting himself from an enemy kaiju, like Gigan, who we'll be looking at shortly. My only criticism with this figure is that his tongue is the same colour as his body, and his teeth are orange where they should be white, and also the right whisker is sticking outwards rather than inwards, but it was like that in the packaging. Those are my only complaints with him, but he is a lovely model. US Manda may not be as good as Akura Manda, However, it's better than the Gummy figure. We need more Gashapons of this character, not only for Destroyer Monsters Manda, but for Final Wars and Godzilla Singular Point. Yeah, I know there's a miniature of Final Wars Manda, but it will cost you an arm and a leg, if you can find it. Uh. 
No surprise to anybody, but here's another favourite of mine, and that is Gigan. However, unlike the Japanese Gashpod figures that represent the original 1972 Gigan, the US model is based off the 73 Gigan from Godzilla vs. Megalon. How do I know this? Well, that's simply because the sculpt is more thicker, the visor eye is larger, and his pose is identical to the greeting that he makes to Megalon when he first encounters the insect god Kaiju. So if only there was a Megalon figure for the Pack of Destruction set to go alongside him, instead of Mogira or Manila, but I digress. I picked on those two long enough. While the figure is mostly 73, the head does appear to be of 72, so this Gigan figure seems to be a hybrid, as he has 73's body and 72's head. I love the green colour scheme that I wish the Japanese counterpart had instead of the bluish green, but it still looks nice. The buzzsaw looks epic, despite being chunky. The model gets a lot of praise from me, but I do however have some complaints with him. For example, the hooks and toe claws are only silver at the tips, rather than fully complete, like you see on the Japanese figure. The tongue is painted silver, and not red, again unlike the Japanese model. However, to be fair, the mouth is pretty tiny, so it would be easy access, and it is mostly unnoticeable. But those are my only nitpicks, as this is still a lovely Giga miniature. Not as good as the Japanese Gashapon figure of him, but still one of the all-time favourites for me, and definitely a win in my book. <coughs> Being a fan of the Showa period, this trio of Showa Kaiju are my absolute favourites. And I would save them till last, but the next trio that we'll be looking at shortly, deserve to be the finale. However, before we talk about the last figures, I'm now going to show you all Godzilla, Manda and Gigan with Nessie the Loch Ness Monster from the Safari Limited Crypto Zoology Tube that I reviewed last year, links in the description below. 1995's Godzilla vs Destroyer was the epic finale to end the Heisei era, so it makes sense that the last figures from the Pack of Destruction set for us to look at should be from that movie. The star of the show was of course Burning Godzilla, which was basically the Mogra Gorgi suit, but with glowing red patterns all over his body, to represent the King of the Monsters going into Meltdown, as that was the plot of the film. Now when it comes to miniature Burning Godzilla figures, they're not that easy to come by. Okay, they are technically, but the official 1998 model of him looks almost identical to his bootleg counterpart, where this is a more accurate representation to 95 Godzilla. And I would go for the newer Japanese Gashapon figure that came out a few years ago, but that one will cost you an arm and a leg. At least it did for me. Unlike Gojira, who had articulation in his arms, Burning Godzilla's are permanently stuck into place. I love the burning tattoos around his body, well patterns, but for the model I like to call them tattoos. And where on most other figures, the burning marks are see-through and you need a light to make them glow, well that doesn't happen with the US miniature. His dorsal spines are red all over, even though in the movie they were only light on the outlines, while the center were black. I also like the face where you can tell that this is Heisei Godzilla, despite the face looking cat-like. As former ex-YouTuber Deadzilla said when he did his review on the set a very long time ago, all the way back in 2009. God, I'm old. I have no gripes with the model, and he's one of the set's best. You know, with many of the figures out of the set, so far I've said that I preferred the Japanese versions, but with Burning Godzilla, I actually like the US model a lot more over the Japanese one, aside from the new figure. Two more to go, and we have Destroyer in his crab form, better known as the Aggregate. Now in the movie, the Aggregate Destroyers were, if my memory serves me correctly, a dark reddish colour. However, the US figure is mostly black. On camera, he may appear to be a very dark purple, but he's actually black, where he's supposed to be a reddish dark. The prototype seemed to have nailed it. However, only the sides of the crown and tips of the claws are dark red. Unlike the Japanese Gashapon model that possesses articulation, the US version does not, and the claw-like arms are permanently stuck out in this striking pose. I like the yellow eyes, as well as the xenomorph-like tongue, which is just a white tip, as it would be really difficult to recreate in miniature. Because there were armies of these creatures in the film, they do look good in packs. So these guys will be perfect for army building. And the US aggregate does look very nice, with his Japanese counterpart that you'll see at the end of the video. <coughs> and finally, is the perfect slash final form of Destroyer. 
and like his aggregate form, he too was mostly black, with bits of him dark red, but in this case, those would be his wings and feet, where in the movie, he was a red colour. Again, the prototype knocked it out of the park. His horn is white, where it should be yellow, and where in the aggregate form, the chest was simple looking, here on the perfect form, it appears to look more effective. Into criticism time, now Destroyer is considered to be one of the most destructive and powerful kaiju of the whole Godzilla franchise, next to King Ghidorah and Space Godzilla, and the Japanese Gashapon figure, despite only being a miniature, demonstrates this perfectly. When comparing each other, the same cannot be said for the US version, because next to his Japanese cousin, he's rather short and puggy, as you'll see at the end. And it also really doesn't help that Burning Godzilla towers over him too. Remember, Destroyer, despite being a crustacean, who resembles the Devil, is technically meant to be the Oxygen Destroyer, but in the form of a monster. I know these are meant to be played with by kids, and children may not notice, unless they're really super hardcore on the franchise. But still, it would have killed Bad Eye Creations to make Destroyer a little bigger than Burning Godzilla, just to show that he's meant to be a threat to the King of the Monsters. But overall, that's my only complaint on Final Form Destroyer. And like the others, he is truly perfect. <laughs> and that's the Bad Eye Creations Godzilla Pack of Destruction, folks. My final thoughts on it? Yes, this is a great pack, and excellent choices of monsters for the most part. However, I, as well as many others, think that both Manila and Mogira were the wrong choices of characters to feature in the set. So I would remove these guys, as well as two others from the set. And those would be Aggregate Destroyer and Mothri Larvae. For the last ones, hear me out before you give the video a dislike. Aggregate Destroyer and Mothri Larvae are great figures, don't get me wrong, but because the pack of destruction was meant to be the first of many sets like it, I would have saved Aggregate Destroyer and Mothri Larvae for a second pack, and for the first set, in their place, as well as Manila and Mogira, I would replace them with Angiras, Mechagodzilla, Rodan, and King Ghidorah. Now that's what I call a real Godzilla pack of destruction set. And for a second set to go alongside the other characters, maybe Godzilla 2000, and also go G slash Godzilla 64. And for the others, I would have Megalon to go alongside Gigan, Space Godzilla to go alongside Rogira, and two other extras, those would be Gorosaurus and Shoa Mechagodzilla. On one hand, I wish there'd be seen in more pack of destruction sets, but the US miniatures, despite their charm, are not as good as their Japanese counterparts. A bad guy Japan have covered a heck of a lot of kaiju in miniature, even though there are some that they have not yet done, but hopefully one day they will at some point in the future. Also with the Japanese figures, you can make your own custom sets, like I do, so it's no loss. By the way, at the start of the video, I said this set was an add-on to the Crumble Zone pack, and while it is, but from what I've read up, the CZ figures tower over the POD models, I know that the Heisei and Millennium Kaiju are supposed to be bigger than their Showa ancestors, but this logically doesn't work for figures, especially in US Destroyer's case. But on their own, they look fine in a city set. But that's just my opinion. I did think about purchasing the Crumble Sword set one time, but only to get out occasionally to make custom counters. However, the price was just too high, so I didn't bother. The Godzilla Pack of Destruction is now a rare set to come by, However, you can get these figures individually off eBay and build a setup yourself, or go for the whole pack like I did. And now to finish off, this is my ranking on each figure from the Bad Eye Creations Godzilla Pack of Destruction set, from least to best. My rankings are Manila, Mothra Larvae, Mogira, Destroyer Aggregate, Burning Godzilla, Destroyer Perfect Form, Mothra Imago, Manda, Gojira, Gigan. What do you think of the Bad Eye Creations Godzilla Pack of Destruction set? Do you remember ordering it? And do you still have these figures? This is Dragonzilla1991 signing out. Take care, and I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.